Hello everyone, this is the historiographer. Today, we will continue the life and times of Almanzor, one of the most famous rulers of Al-Andalus, where his reign as the de facto ruler of Muslim Spain, his reforms, and his various military campaigns will be explored. With the death of his opponent Ghalib after the victory in the Battle of Torre Vicente in 981 AD, Almanzor was left as the sole governing power in Muslim Iberia. To ensure the continuation of his power, Almanzor established units of mixed origins by the mid-980s. These units consisted of tribal Arabs, Slavs, Berbers, and native Iberian converts, where he would successfully use ethnic rivalries to further his own power. Being the real ruler of Al-Andalus, Almanzor sought to further concentrate his power. In 991 AD, Almanzor had officially set up his own court in the city he had constructed, Al-Zahira, where he made most of the state's political decisions with the ceremonial consent of Subh the Basque and of the Caliph. He had also begun to use his own seal, as well as ordering the mosques to recite his name after that of the Caliph during Friday prayers. However, his attempts to seize power ended the long alliance between Almanzor and Subh in 996. Indeed, after 20 years as a representative of Subh, Almanzor confronted the Caliph's mother and her supporters, as they frustrated Subh tried to attempt a coup as well as setting up a rebellion in North African controlled frontiers. However, the palace coup had failed politically with the supporters of Subh being removed as well as militarily, as Almanzor sent his son and heir Abdul Malik to North Africa to crush the Moroccan revolt in 997 as well as thwart any attacks from Shia Fatimid clients. Finally, this failed coup left Almanzor as the only uncontested power in Al-Andalus, where he would effectively found the Emirate state. This coup had endangered Ibn Abi Amr, as he was now risking being seen as nothing more but a usurper. Up to this time, Al-Manzur had already led up to 30 military expeditions to the northern Iberian kingdoms, which posed a threat to the stability of the frontiers. However, to further bolster his legitimacy and position himself as the defender of the faith after the delicate political situation in 996, Ibn Abi Amr had begun his greatest ever raid on one of Christianity's holiest cities, Santiago de Compostela a Christian city which attracts many pilgrims. Indeed, in a combined operation involving his own land troops and the fleet, Almanzor's forces had reached the city in mid-August of 997. According to various sources, the city was deserted, with its inhabitants having abandoned it for fear of Almanzor. The city was plundered, and the bells of the church were transported to Cordoba as a sign of victory. Victory against the Kingdom of Leon in the raid against Santiago de Compostela had cemented Ibn Abi Amr's legacy as the champion of the faith, where Almanzar's legitimacy had increased twofold overnight. News of the devastating raid soon spread throughout Europe, and the reputation of Almanzar to the Christians became so frightening that it is said that Christian mothers used to scare their children to bed with stories of Almanzar. And from here comes the saying that Almanzar was the scourge of Europe. Almanzor died on August 9, 1002 of illness at the age of about 65 in Medina Salem after returning from his final and 57th campaign. Undoubtedly, Almanzor was one of the few Muslim leaders who stopped Christian incursions into the state, as his reign put a temporary stop to the Reconquista. He was succeeded by his son Abdul Malik where the Emirate state would last until 1009, where the fracturing of the centralized Andalusian state would occur, ushering in the Muluk al tawaif era. But that is a story for another time. Thank you for watching and consider subscribing if you like the content, as it helps massively. This has been the historiographer. Have a good one.